So why do some mechanics prefer to use this 111 year old leather on vital oil rig seals to keep everything closed instead of modern plastics and rubber? Sorry, everyone, one second. Have you ever had a wine or tea that makes your mouth feel dry? The reason your mouth feels dry is because there are tannins in those wine and teas, and similar tannins go into this leather. And this leather is some of the most magical leather in the entire planet. I'm assuming when it came out 111 years ago, the world lost their minds, and I'm correct, because even to this day, 111 years later, this is one of the most popular leathers on the planet. And during World War II, 18 million square feet of this leather was being produced per month. That's more than this factory now produces in many, many years. This leather changed everything from being worn in boots to being in tanks, to being in airplanes, to being in trucks. Oh, and speaking of absolutely insane stories, three years before the Second World War in Krakow, Poland, a man said, hey, I think it's a great idea uh, for me to start a footwear company. And everybody said, yeah, it doesn't seem like anything's gonna go wrong soon. And then World War II happened, especially in Poland, and somehow this company still exists, and that company's name is Goral Footwear. They moved to Sheffield, England in 2005. I flew to Scotland in 2024. Goral reached out to me and said, Michael, why don't you swing by England? We'll make you a pair of boots, and then you can leave. I said, okay, Goral, that sounds great. I'll be right there. I got on a Scottish plane where the seats were made of Harris Tweed. I flew to Sheffield, England, then went into a factory in Sheffield, England, where people only speak Polish and got boots made for me. What a crazy journey Goral had so far. They survived World War II, and now they're surviving YouTubers. These boots are called the Charmin boots and I wore the black ones in Scotland for the entire time. Every day on the plane when I got home, everything through rain, sleet, snow, ocean water, obviously they held up fantastically. And the brown ones on my feet are going through their maiden voyage right now as I film in Vermont. So anyways, this is today's agenda. Number one, what happened 111 years ago that made the US military want 18 million square feet of this leather per month? Number two, sorry Goral, but your boots are made weird but that's not a bad thing tricked ya tricked ya i should have seen your face they are made weird i'm not lying but there is a benefit that i like to them i do it on every boot video i'll talk about it later and this is a little better than most boots number three is called catastrophic failure that is the answer to the question posed in the beginning of this video we'll elaborate on that more and number four there are two things that i would change on these boots to make them the perfect boots for me of this style the combat doc martin alternative whatever you want to call it this is the reason we're in new hampshire we're puppy sitting. Louie! Hi. If you're a big fat leather nerd, you already know what I'm talking about, but this is Horween Chromexel leather. Chromexel, Chromexel, CXL, whatever you want to call it. Horween was founded in Chicago in 1905, and they sold mostly shell cordovan because people used it as a razor strop. But then Gillette came along and said, hey, screw the straight razor, what about disposable razors? And everybody was like, yeah, that sounds better. And in 1913, what got really popular, after it was invented, of course, was Chromexel leather. First off, what's up, everybody? It's Michael, CEO, founder, operator, CEO, COFO of Iron Snail Industries and Co. Nice to see you all. This video is sponsored by Goral. And why did I feel comfortable doing a sponsored video by Goral? I've worn these boots pretty extensively. I understand how they're made. Roseanville did a video where he cut them in half and you can see the materials inside of them. I flew to their factory. I met the people. I saw the materials. I saw the machines. I talked to everybody. And these boots are fantastic. I was really happy when Goral reached out to me because they're great boots. And you can get 15% off of these boots by using my code IRON15. How's that? When Horween was making this leather, they could have processed it in two different ways. They could have chrome tanned it or they could have vegetable tanned it. Or technically they could have also brain tanned it or oil tanned it. They did none of those things. But at the same time, they also did vegetable tanning and chrome tanning and sandwiched them together. But to truly understand how vegetable tanning and chrome tanning come together to make Chrome XL, you need to have a basic understanding about how leather tanning works. We are tightening spaghetti. By the way, a lot of this information comes from Nick Horween, Horween themselves. There's a really awesome podcast called The Full Grain Podcast, where they talk extensively about Chrome XL leather. Highly recommended. But anyways, on one of those podcast episodes, they were talking about what tanning leather actually does. And the example that they gave is picture a big jelly, you know, ugh. sorry, I don't know, it just grossed me out all of a sudden. Picture a big, bowl full of spaghetti that you can wiggle it's loose it's all around and everything like that when you tan leather lock all of that spaghetti together you can't you know sift your little fingers through it or anything like that it is now locked and it's a strong piece of leather i'm going to use soldiers as an analogy instead the phrase tanning leather stems from the one of the original ways of tanning leather vegetable tanning in things like tree bark and tea and wine like i was talking about before there is something or are something called tannins big 
fat molecules that make your mouth feel dry. Those tannins in the vegetable matter bond to collagen molecules and essentially lock everything down. To go to my analogy, picture a bunch of people in a wide open field just running around crazy. They're running amok. And picture me, a bad guy in this scenario, walking on the field. I can get past everybody pretty easily because people run by, I wait, then I go in. And I can get into the center of the field. And that's what's happening when a dead animal's skin is not processed. It rots, bacteria comes in, anything can get into it and destroy it. But if we introduce tannins to those people that are running around like crazy in the field, all of a sudden they are an army all locked together, hand in hand, not letting anything in. So the leather, now leather, doesn't go bad, doesn't get gross, and things can't be introduced into it. Now vegetable tanning and chrome tanning make two different kinds of armies. Vegetable tanning, remember I said it was important that the tannins are big and fat? They're so big it takes a long time to actually get into the hide and start this cross-linking process, start making all of the soldiers. So you have to leave the hides in this solution for a much longer time, but there are a lot of benefits to vegetable tanning. There are also some to chrome tanning, but they're different. Vegetable tanning, if we're sticking to this army analogy, huge, huge army, extensive, massive army, and all the soldiers are holding hands like this, and they cover the entire battlefield. That makes a very stiff and a very rigid leather. And also, since they're holding hands, there's pockets that makes the leather more breathable than chrome tan, which we'll talk about in a second. But it's a very stiff and moldable leather. If you get it wet, you can mold leather to a different shape. The vegetable tanning process is also much more natural, which results in a much more natural leather. It patinas over time, it darkens, it can get water spots. Because it's porous, water can enter easier. Chrome tanning is essentially the complete opposite of vegetable tanning. It's incredibly fast, it's not natural, it doesn't use tannins, it uses chromium salt, which get into the leather, well, get into the hide, and boom, then it becomes leather in like a day, when the vegetable tanning process is way, way, way longer, and that means the cross-linking that happens, the army that is forming, is different than vegetable tanned. The chromium army would not be as extensive, it wouldn't be as huge and widespread, but it'd be very highly trained soldiers, very, very close together, almost bonded together, so they're a specialized, impenetrable force, which means the leather is softer and more pliable because it's not this extensive network of rigid people all across the battlefield. And also, since everything is so close together, the leather is less breathable and more water resistant. So both have cons and both have pros. Oh, drat. Those both sound so cool. I wish I could have both at the same time. Well, guess what? You can have both at the same time. But when I called Horween, I said, you can have both at the same time? They said, yeah, but that's not good enough. We can do even more. So they did even more. That's not the end of how Chromexo leather is made. There's one more thing that makes it cool. To put it simply, these boots are constructed in a very peculiar way. And these are not cheap boots. These are very luxurious boots. They are expensive boots. Do not get me wrong, but they feel expensive. They are beefy tanks constructed interestingly. Obviously we know the outer leather here is Horween Chrome XL, but these are also leather lined and the leather lining is half as thick as the outer Chrome XL lining, but that's very thick. These are thick boots. This is actually a combination of two different things. So this is a Blake stitched boot through and through all in all, but it's also sidewall stitched, which you see, you know, if you look at your sneakers, there's usually a sidewall, the rubber that comes up onto the upper and you see stitching around that. That's exactly what's happening here. And you can see it better on the boots that I'm wearing because of one of my design choices. So when you are repairing these or resoling them or whatever, the actual shape of the boot never needs to get modified. And it's cool. It gives you a little bit more water resistance, which I will test in a second. You're not undoing the Blake stitch. You're getting the sidewall stitch out, pulling it off, plopping another one on and restitching it. So really these aren't the most water resistant boots. They're not rubber boots or anything like that, but they are very water resistant. Even past the sidewall, they're water resistant really up until this Puritan stitch on the side. You could stick your foot in water Water, right up to the Puritan stitch for a pretty long time. You're okay, my feet are still dry. I'm gonna put the Puritan stitch in a little bit. Still fine. There we go. It's just starting to come through the Puritan stitch. So you have chrome tanning, you have vegetable tanning, and then you probably know where this is going based off of what I said before. You have the best of both worlds, which is combination tanning. You start by chrome tanning this leather and then you retan it through the vegetable tanning process, and that gives you the Hannah Montana special. The best of both worlds. Leather that is still water resistant, but now a little bit breathable. It's also a little bit moldable. It also patinas. It also stays soft, but is strong. 
It is the best of both worlds. That is why it's the Hannah Montana special. That's a song that she released, I think, in 2005. But Horween didn't stop there. They have their combination tent leather, but they also hot stuff it. They fill this leather with oils and waxes, so much so that the leather looks wet when you have it, and so much stuff is packed inside of this leather that when you move it around, it's a pull-up leather because you're displacing all of the oils and everything, so you see the actual color change. And it has, finally, the properties that make really high pressure jobs want to use this over plastic or rubbers for gaskets and seals and motor seals, especially in World War II, but even now today. According to Nick Horween, the reason Chrome XL leather, and it's not pure Chrome XL leather, it's not this beautiful leather that's on boots, slightly different kind of leather. The reason it's used on gaskets and seals, on oil rigs and stuff like that, is because there isn't catastrophic failure. Vegetable tan leather, chrome tan leather, some plastic, some rubbers, whatever it may be, I'm baffled that there's not a modern technology that beats it, they fail or could fail abruptly. So if you're on a machine, a very important gasket in the engine could just fail, which sucks. But Chrome XL, what they're using, fails slowly. So you can hear it fail over time and you can anticipate when you need to replace a gasket, thus saving the life of whatever machine you are working on, which is very important when you have big giant tanks and planes and trucks and stuff in World War II and oil rigs of today. First thing that I want to change, luckily for us, or you if you like this change too, you can just do this change. Gorel is a small enough company where you could request different things on your boot. But the first thing I would change is I think adding a different color sidewall stitch adds just enough pop. They look a little bit more like Doc Martens. I don't know if uh, you noticed that, but I do think it is a good look and Doc Martens does it for a reason. So I would change this sidewall stitch on this black boot. I want mine to be a really dark green, like just enough where you could see it. The only thing I would like to add on these boots are speed hooks on the top three. So I could just lace these up quickly, I could toss them off quickly. I love speed hooks. I know it's an aesthetic thing to not put speed hooks on, but your boy likes speed hooks. Anyways, even though this video is sponsored by Gorel, don't forget about that. I would recommend these boots. I'm not lying. I'm not trying to tell you some code. I'm not trying to sell you bad boots. You can see them cut in half. You can see them built. These are awesome boots made in Sheffield, England. Thank you, Gorel, for sponsoring this video. You paid for a lot of wool, of all things. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all very soon, next week, or even sooner.